baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Verse 18, he makes a statement. In verse 19, he interprets the statement. He says, here's how we know we're the truth. We always like to blow off because we believe in Acts 2.38 that that's somehow we are the truth. John says, here's how we know we are the truth. We love indeed. And the blessing. Now watch carefully. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. The message I'm to preach now to you is simply entitled Refuge from Despair. Refuge from despair. Got to look it in Brother Daniel Webster's book. He told me what refuge meant. That which shelters or protects from danger or distress. That brings deliverance from that which would harm. Any place where one is out of the way of evil or danger. A harbor that provides safety for vessels in stress or inclement weather. A house of refuge, place for homeless, distressed, or destitute. Even God is in the refuge business. He built cities of refuge, places of safety, listen carefully, for unintentional homicide. Not for deliberate murderers. Refuge for the unintended. A shelter, a protection from danger. We have animal refuges, wildlife refuges, game reserves. We're living in a day of unprecedented refugees, leaving homes, countries, seeking protection. If you please, to reduce it on a smaller level, even a hospital is a place of refuge, a refuge from sickness. Even a vacation and a trip could be considered a refuge from the rat race and the pressure. A fishing hole, your favorite hobby, a walk, your country place, on and on, refugees and refuge. But I'm here, I'm believing with all my heart without being brash or egotistical to challenge and yet help the movement, the people of God. Where do we go for a refuge for failure? Where do we go for a refuge from despair? Where do we go when somehow we have made our mistakes? One writer said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. Please bear with me just a moment. I know it's hard for you to go up and down, but I want you to just grab what I'm trying to say. The Scripture said the heavens are not clean before God. God charges His angels with folly. But God is rich in mercy. As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear Him. 
The Scripture said it's not the will of God that any perish, but all come to repentance. Why have we let the devil give us that Scripture to make it an evangelistic mandate? That Scripture is for saints. Well, I'm... We have gone crazy the last three or four years, questing and searching for gift ministries, power ministries, and I believe we need them. But the gifts work by love. I don't hear anybody preaching about, give me some more love. I want this gift, and I want that gift, and I want to cast out devils and heal the sick, and I've prayed for years and years, I want all that stuff. But three weeks ago, God woke me up in the middle of the morning and gave me something and said, I want you to talk to this conference, because my people are sick, but they are sick of condemnation. Well, you can get quiet all you want to, I've preached in libraries before. You got to jumping around here over a play. I'm not playing. I said God is greater than my heart. There's two things we better learn tonight that we better never believe. Two things. Don't ever believe the devil, because a slime bucket couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible. He's a liar. You hear me? He's a liar. He couldn't tell the truth. He's a liar. Don't believe him. He's trying to put guilt on you. He's trying to put condemnation on you. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Don't let the devil rape your soul with guilt and condemnation. Now stay with me here. I told you two things. Listen, there's one more thing you don't ever need to believe. And that's your heart. Did you hear the man? You think I'm crazy. Oh, we're on that devil jazz. But the minute I said heart, you kind of went. But the scripture said, the heart is deceitful above all things. I'm going to make you believe me. The heart is deceitful above all things. And what the name of God are you believing this report for? Don't you understand your heart is so limited, it can only register right and wrong. If you do something good, your heart says, nice. If you do something cruddy, it says, bad. It's only got one gauge. Extreme right, extreme left. But I know a higher court that knows all things. You're not hearing me. Our movement is dying on the inside while we play all this Jubilee jazz. You can leave here with your goosebumps and they'll be gone in a few minutes. But that guilt, that condemnation, that sense of failure will torment you in the morning. It will torment you in the evening. It will drive you crazy. It will make you walk away from God. God wants to heal us tonight of condemnation. Jesus is a refuge from despair. You hear me? This scripture says, if our heart condemns us, God's greater than our heart knoweth all things. Now watch this. I read that book for 20 years. This past year, God gave me a revelation. I'm giving you your tapes. God gave it to me. For 20 years, I read that scripture and I thought it said, man, if my heart condemns me, I'm in bad shape. God's greater than my heart. God showed me this year, Jeffrey Wayne, you've had it backwards for 20 years. That is not a scripture of condemnation. It is one of encouragement. The 
Because when I fail God, my heart says, bad, hypocrite, fake, plastic, shallow, liar, quit. But he that knows all things says, hold on, grace is coming. You're not hearing me. If my heart can get me, God is greater than my heart and knows everything. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Come on, I want to give you some classic Arnold statements. You ready? First one. God never has a bad day. You're not getting the impact of that yet, but you will in about two more statements. At my best, I have lousy days. At my best, there's some days I act out of character. There are times with all my Holy Ghost and gee John, gee John running around the building. I act like an absolute fool. I act like the, the, like the terrible jerk that sometimes my flesh shows me I am. And you and I justify ourselves and say, well, I'm just not myself today. Poor God can't ever say that. He's always at his best. You didn't hear me. Book says, God is love. When? Always. God loves me. When? Always. Some of you don't love me. If I rub you, they can carcass the wrong way. I can go to one court of appeal higher than you who loves me always. cannot throw himself to have a bad day. If he's loved before, he's loved now. If he loves you last year, he loves you right now. It has nothing to do with your performance. I'm comfortable with some people as long as I perform properly. You ever notice how us humans give out our love? We give it out to people who are worthy. Who meet our approval. Whose behavior and conduct is what we think it ought to be. But God commended His love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If He loved us when we were sinners, He's going to love us when we're sons, even if we sin. What's the matter with you mannequins out there? I'm talking about a refuge. There's a place we can go. There's a court of appeal. That when my heart condemns me, God is greater than my heart and knows all things. See you, son. I know I got 50 minutes. Okay. Now watch. This scripture says, watch, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. What does that mean in, in normal English? If I be good, I feel good. If I don't violate the Bible, my neighboring pastor, or the manual, I believe I'll pray tonight. You know why? I have confidence towards God. You know why? Because my stupid flesh thinks that my approval and my acceptance of the throne of grace is predicated on my performance. It's predicated on His at the cross. It ain't mine right now. It's His. I stand behind the cross. I stand under the blood. I stand in the name of Jesus. 
I have been made accepted in the beloved. It doesn't matter what you think, my friends. Grace saved me. Grace keeps me. Grace will help me. Grace is grace. And it's not law. We're saved by grace through faith. You see, as long as you perform properly, then you feel like you've got confidence toward God. You don't back the car out, Mama, through the garage door. The old man comes home. Everything's hunky-dory. But if you've got the front end of the bumper hanging in the back end of the sink somewhere, you're a little apprehensive in borrowing 20 bucks to go somewhere. I'm trying to get on your level. I'm way out here and ready. I'm trying to get you to catch up. You ever, well, I used to be young. I know I don't look it, but I used to be young. And I can remember trying to borrow the car from my dad. As long as, you, as long as, you know, the lawn was cut and the garbage was taken out, and I hadn't fussed and cussed with my mom and been a smart aleck and what have you, I could pretty well walk up to George and say, Hey, uh, Pop, how about laying the keys on the jack? <laughs> and Pop would usually say, uh, Well, Mildred, it's been good today. But if my mother and I had a fuss, and me and my brother had a knockdown drag out her, and I ended up saying a few, <laughs> I was not so bold to walk up to George and say, how about the Pontiac, Judge? It was more like, using the car tonight. Now, hear what I'm trying to tell you. And when we have a cruddy day, and we think things we shouldn't, and we react the way we shouldn't, the devil has put this damnable condemnation on us so that we don't come boldly. But the book says, come boldly. I said, come boldly. I said, I'm welcome at the throne. It doesn't have anything to do with my performance. It has to do with the blood and grace and mercy. Now, just a second. Do you hear me now? One of the dirtiest things the devil's ever sold to us. And I don't know why we've been so stupid. We write all these books, sell all these tapes, go to all these conferences, and the devil sold us this foolish stuff. God don't love us. We've made it into a Sunday school song. That's why you're wearing a ward on your brain and staying awake at night. And why you're suicidal. And why you're on the verge of a divorce. And why you're an idiot. You leave these conferences and you're frustrated. Your nerves are frazzled. You know why? It ain't because your goosebump machine ain't working. It's because when you walk out, guilt draws your soul. Condemnation crushes you. Believe this iron heel. But I'm here, I believe, as a word from the Lord to tell you, my friend, you don't have to live with condemnation. If your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart and knows all things. Before we sin, all the devil does is wear a different robe. He's a quick change artist. He is. Before we sin, he just wears the robe of a tempter. And he just says, oh, try, drink, look, feel, touch. See what it does? And the minute us dummies go, while you're reaching, he goes into the tailor and changes. And now he's the accuser. says, you got the Holy Ghost, and you did that, you believe in Jesus' name, and you think those thoughts, you mean you're really a child of God, and you listen to this, read that, or watch that, yeah, 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 and he's accusing, and then after he accuses, your heart takes up to me, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm a dirty dog, I'm no good, I'm a hypocrite, might as well quit, might as well leave, but all of a sudden, here comes the God of all grace, stepping in and saying, whoa, said, no, my friend, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never put on you more than you can bear. But with every test and every trial, I'll make a way of escape. I took you to take you there. I'm not going to drop you just because you dropped the ball. I believe that. Somebody better hear what I'm saying. 
please be seated just another minute or two. That's right. God don't love me. No, sir. The reason why we believe that crud is because our love is predicated on people who are worthy, who win our approval, comply with our wishes, don't irritate or violate our so-called holy thoughts. Anybody that doesn't measure after that, we don't like. I'm going, I'm going to speak well. God hates sin. He loves the sinner. Calvary proves that. And come to think of it, all you dudes sitting here on your caucus prove that. Why don't you get a fresh concept of God? Instead of all this ooga booga 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 stuff. Why don't we just, just be like a little Sunday school kid said, my dad loves me a whole big bunch. Literally, I still can't read some of you. I'm, I ain't still got to it. How many parents we got here? Raise your hand. Put your hand down. How many of you parents, when your kids stole, you, you, you put them out for adoption? Come on, you hypocrites. Now wait. I remember the first time my little girl came home. And I hear I'm trying to teach her. She's got the Holy Ghost. And I baptize her myself. And she's trying to live in a preacher's home, which is kind of a little hell, a little heaven. And all of a sudden I get a note from the teacher. And, and she got caught looking on somebody's paper. That's what they call good old Brooklyn cheating. Now wait a minute. When, when Michael, excuse me, brother Mike. When Dina Leanne walks in my house, it's like this. Because she's daddy's girl. Hi, dad. But you watch that heart needle go. And when she come in school that day, it's... Hi, baby. Right. <laughs> and then when you talk, the head is attached to the heart. Yeah. And what she's having a problem with? Her heart's condemning her. You know what her heart told It like to kill me one day. What's the matter, baby? I, I did something at school I shouldn't have done. Okay. Well, come on, talk to old dad. What happened? <laughs> well, come on. What's the matter? Here's what she was afraid of. You won't love me anymore. For oh, what? Because I, I did that. And you told me against it. You know what? Love no more. Did you hear me? Love the more. When she, that's right, because she needed me. I said, baby, your daddy would never give you up. I would never put you on the bus and send you out of here because you took drugs or you got yourself in sexual trouble or you smoked or you did some stupid stuff. But the devil would lie to a bunch of us and damn us to a devil's hell and tell us because we do things wrong or we have lousy days or we disappoint God or ourselves that somehow we're up for adoption. I'm here to curse that spirit. I'm here to tell you that's a lie from that devil. God is not going to drop you in the middle of the road. God is going to put more grace where more grace is needed. God is going to stretch forth His blood-stained hand and going to bathe you again. When my heart condemns me, God is greater than my heart and knows all of it. Am I telling you the truth? Please be seated just another minute. I read a scripture, Bishop, that always bothered me. It said, the Lord, it says exactly these words, God is angry with the wicked every day. And I looked at that and I said, boy, he's going to fix their caucus. He's going to fry them into a bunch of crispy critters, man. going to just going to put them cats in the lake of fire. going to get rid of them slime bags. And then all of a sudden God says, you missed it, Jeffrey. I'm angry with them because I love them. Only real love 
is able to get really angry. We get angry with people in our churches who don't do right. But I wonder if our anger is birthed from love or violating our little image. I wonder if it's love or a little vain pride and ego might get hurt in a scenario of what we think is influential. But God says, when I get mad with you, Jeffrey, it's not because I hate you. If I hated you, I'd let you go your way. Hey, Brother Teddy, when your children were growing up and, and they did all the dumb things that children do when they grow up, did you call the police? You send them to Tupelo? <laughs> now you hear what I'm fixing to say. I know I'm a little humorous, but brother, I'm as, I'm as anointed as, as, as Wild Bill Cole over there is. <laughs> you hear me now? Whatever God was, He is. If He ever loved me, He must love me now. And he does not love me less because I fail. You're not hearing me. What happens is our heart beats too loud. Wrong. Error. Hypocrite. Trespass. It's the devil. Now I'll just cross theological swords with all of you. God don't condemn you. God convicts. He convicts so we won't be condemned. It's the devil who condemns. You know why? Because he can only give what's alive in him. And he's already condemned. Don't you understand? If the devil can get on our case and make us feel guilt, guilt will give birth to regret. Regret gives birth to remorse, dismay, despair, departure, defeat, death. Don't you understand the devil's tricks? Is it so hard for you to understand the difference between the voice of condemnation and conviction? It's real easy. If you're condemned, the voice of the spirit or the emotion that will condemn you will point to your deeds. If God convicts you, He will use His Spirit and His Word and point you to the Savior. Brother Kilgore, I've got a friend that knows everything. Don't you understand? Condemnation is designed to drive me away. Conviction is designed to draw me back. Condemnation is designed to ruin me. Conviction is designed to reconcile me. Guilt will drive me from the Lord. Conviction will draw me closer to God. Guilt, condemnation is hell's evil weapon to steal joy and peace and fellowship. But grace is heaven's agent that restores and reconciles and renews and gives us a fresh concept and a fresh vision of our great God. I just want to tell you this. I, I've told some of you this again, but I felt so impressed with the Holy Ghost before to just make reference again, if you don't mind. I don't know why some of you cats are letting the devil suck up your joy, beat your head in, and damn and condemn you because you have thoughts and feelings and emotions that are less than the dignity of a Christian. You have to understand something. This imbecile who's calling you a failure is the universe greatest. Now, you, you didn't hear me. Do you know how pathetic the devil is when he accuses you? He backslid when there wasn't a devil. He's 
couldn't even make it when there wasn't a devil. What am I going to listen to him for? He lived in the throne room of God, the burning presence of God, and couldn't make it. Don't let him tell you you're a failure. Look at him and say, I'm a failure. You're the biggest failure that ever was. And you're condemned, but I'm not condemned. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Can I have just about 15 more minutes and I'll finish? Just, just 15 minutes and I'll finish. I want to hit something now as hard as I can. Now you, you conservatives, you ultra conservative Puritan Pentecostal against everything but fresh air cats, listen up. Why is the United Pentecostal Church as a movement afraid to preach grace? I'm going to give you what I think, what I think. Not that I know, Reverend Will, what I think. The Holy Ghost told me. My people refuse to preach grace because they have watched people who preach grace and stretched it to disgrace so we won't touch it. Grace is not a license for loose living. Grace is a higher law than law. The law of love and the law of liberty is much higher than rules and regulations. I don't need no manual. I don't need you to tell me beans. I got the Holy Ghost. I fast and pray. I walk by this book. I fear God. And I love Him that saved me. And whatever He wants me to do, the greatest desire of my life is not to just be saved. It's to please God. We are cursed with a people who are so selfish, so small. What you want to do is miss hell. Did you hear me? All you want to do is miss hell. I gave up that garbage about 18 years ago. I'm not interested in missing hell. That's a guaranteed solution if I walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit. I don't have to worry about hell. My drive, my desire is not to live so I can just miss hell and miss a bunch of critiquing. I want to please Him. I want to please Him. I want to make Him happy. I want to honor the grace that grabbed me, that called me out, that forgave me, that adopted me, that redeemed me, that remitted my sins, that set me free. I want to please Him. And so, because we've seen certain movements, denominations, whatever you want to call them, walking in what they call grace, and they don't dress like us, act like us, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. I am afraid you. <laughs> you hear me? And so people in some movements have misinterpreted grace and extended it too far. While we, the non-involved critics, don't extend it at all. And so we make more resolutions, build a manual that needs loose leaf papers, gotta go in and out, outweighs the King James family size Bible, and you could take care of it in one scripture. Don't walk in the flesh, walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But we are cursed with a lot of people who are not interested in being full of the love of God. They're interested in brown envelopes in their picture. Yeah. Now, I'm not God's cop. You guys can just run me down, laugh, or you won't do whatever you want. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm saved by grace. Gra 
Grace found me when I was a drunk. Grace forgave me when I was a liar. Grace put me in the baptismal tank. Grace filled me with the Holy Ghost. And when I committed sin, grace convicted my heart. And grace forgave me again. I'm not telling you, I'm not afraid of grace. Because if I live for God with a yearning to please Him, I will walk in faith. Could it be, you can be seated in a second, I'm sorry. Could it be that the other reason why we do not preach a lot of grace is because we're afraid we'll lose our little nasty control of people. How dare we let people hear from God themselves? We're the head knockers. Don't you know there's believers and then there's capital B believers? I'm going to tell you, honey, there's something coming down in this universe besides the Berlin Wall. trust the Holy Ghost, if we don't give people a long list of legislation of what they can do, what they can't do, where they can go, where they can't go, you don't really believe all the people you tell all that junk to is doing it, do you? You know what, you little hypocrites? You might believe in more grace than I've given you credit for. Let me let me give you. A little, I'm gonna give you a little play. Watch, jumping, shouting, juking. Go over to Mangan's, eat. Go home to the motel, take a shower. Oh, Jesus! Lay down. Think I'll watch the news. You end up watching something you shouldn't watch. And then there goes your heart. And then you don't feel like praying. And you don't feel like worshiping. And you don't feel like studying. But here comes grace saying, I know all things. I know you didn't really mean it. I'm greater than your heart. I'll still forgive you. I'll still have mercy on you. I'll not damn you. I'll not condemn you. I'm greater than your mistakes. I tell the truth. A few more minutes here. God wants to get a hold of us tonight and give us a mass healing. We got to get rid of this guilt. We got to get rid of this condemnation. We got to believe He loves me with an everlasting love. It doesn't matter how many mistakes I make. He still loves me like when He first found me. Now listen to me, my ultra-conservative brethren. You hear me now? And I'm not against ultra-conservative. I think we need it. I don't particularly go that way, but I think we need it. So it's right. And I don't think we need ultra-liberals that don't believe that needs greasy. I don't think that's good either. I'm trying to get a balance in my life. But I'm just about wore out with you and your dumb critiquing. I don't know whether you're an idiot or not. I don't know. I don't know whether you're the terrible devil I heard you were. I don't really think so. I think you got the Holy Ghost. I don't know all the answers to all this junk. And I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed in all you cats. 
But man, we're sending up Scud missiles for one camp and Patriots from the other, and the fallout is killing a lot of innocent people. And I'm saying if God forgives, you better forgive. And if somebody has to be forgiven, you better forgive him. Well, you're an absolute nasty, rotten hypocrite, and God ought to kill you. You hear me now? This book says that God was merciful and gracious to save us. He is now faithful and just to forgive us. The God of all glory and power is also the God of all grace. We are called to preach the truth. Listen, friend, we can jump up and down and play our ukuleles and bang into the walls all we want to. Now, we've got the truth. We've got the truth. The scripture says you are to preach the truth in L-O-V-E. We're not supposed to beat somebody because they don't act dressed and look like us. How do you know we're right? I think we're right as far as trying to be modest and sober and not, not wear a bunch of stuff that's gaudy and draws undue attention to ourselves. I, I think that's proper. I don't, I don't have no problem with that. I'm not, I don't care how much grace God shows me. I'm not going to buy a bikini and put on a necklace. I'm not interested. I'm comfortable where I am. I'm staying right here. You know why? Because when my heart condemns me, Bishop, God is greater than my heart and knows all things. What am I saying? Hey, Jack, you don't know all things. Shut up. All you can do is judge the deed. You don't know beans about my desire. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.